I will start by discussing properties that are very well confirmed in the scientific literature, namely the hypoglycemic effect that is lowering blood sugar levels. Well, in the latest scientific papers from 2019 and 2020, you can read that the use of vinegar reduces blood glucose levels, which is especially important for people with type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance and prediabetes. In one study, researchers showed that 20 ml of apple cider vinegar per day reduced blood sugar levels by as much as 10 mg per deciliter, which I consider a very good result. Furthermore, current knowledge shows that apple cider vinegar can increase tissue sensitivity to insulin, meaning it can elevate insulin resistance. To put it simply, our body does not have to secrete excessive amounts of insulin, which is harmful for our health, in order to reduce sugar levels. People who used apple cider vinegar showed a reduction in insulin resistance indexes, such as HOMA IR and QUICKIE. Additionally, apple cider vinegar resulted in a favorable reduction of glycated hemoglobin levels, meaning that it was helpful in diabetes control. By the way, I would like to bring up another experiment that was done on rats with diabetes that were given apple cider vinegar. In it, it was observed that apple cider vinegar prevented diabetes-induced liver and kidney damage. Accordingly, it can be speculated that consumption of vinegar prevents diabetic complications to some extent in the context of liver and kidney. However, this effect is not 100% certain as it has not been confirmed in human studies so far. People struggling with lipid disorders who have been found to have high levels of triglycerides in their blood may also benefit from the health benefits of using vinegar. In one scientific study it was noted that the administration of 30 ml of vinegar per day resulted in a reduction in blood triglyceride levels of about 40 mg per deciliter, indicating high efficacy. Beneficial effects were also confirmed when using a smaller amount of vinegar, 14 ml per day. People using this amount of vinegar had a reduction in triglycerides of about 20 mg per deciliter. The researchers calculated that by reducing triglyceride levels in the blood by this 40 mg with the use of vinegar, we can simultaneously reduce the risk of coronary heart disease by 10%. Vinegar is advertised as an effective and miraculous weight loss remedy. Personally, I believe that this statement is a half-truth and I already explain why. Indeed, scientific studies show that consuming vinegar can be helpful in weight loss. But there are concrete numbers behind term weight loss. The results of a study published in 2018 showed that consuming 30 ml of apple cider vinegar daily resulted in a weight loss of just over 1.5 pound compared to a control group. This weight reduction occurred over a period of 3 months. That is, by using the vinegar for 3 months, the patients were able to lose an additional 1.5 pounds. Additionally, there was a 2.5 cm reduction in hip circumference in the subjects. Based on these observations, it can be concluded that drinking vinegar supports weight loss. However, its effectiveness is not particularly high and certainly not as impressive as some people portray it to be. Vinegar also has documented antimicrobial properties. Scientists have shown that apple cider vinegar has the ability to inhibit the growth of pathogenic bacteria such as Escherichia coli and Staphylococcus aureus. In addition, vinegar prevents the development of candida albicans, which is responsible for the occurrence of candidiasis. A pilot study conducted on a small group of people also showed that vinegar can relieve constipation. This effect was observed in patients suffering from schizophrenia who were being treated with clozapine. One of the side effects of clozapine is precisely that it slows down intestinal peristalsis and contributes to constipation. About 4% of people who develop constipation may develop serious gastrointestinal complications, such as bowel obstruction. Based on these studies, it is very likely that consuming vinegar will help with this problem. Current knowledge proves that vinegar can also be a valuable dietary component in women suffering from polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS for short. 
Researchers have shown that using 15 ml of apple cider vinegar daily restored ovulatory function. They suggested that due to this effect, vinegar may be helpful in treating infertility in PCOS patients. Additionally, the study authors noted that apple cider vinegar reduced insulin resistance in the women studied. Here, I will add that insulin resistance is one of the most common metabolic disorders found among women with polycystic ovary syndrome. In view of this, we can say that apple cider vinegar improves the health of women with PCOS. There are also some scientific indications that vinegar has a hepatoprotective properties, that is, it has a protective effect on the liver. I say indications because this effect has only been found in animal experiments. So far, there have been no human studies that could confirm such properties of vinegar. Experiments performed on animals have proven that apple cider vinegar can protect hepatocytes, which is liver cells, from the harmful effects of mercury. There is also a study in the scientific literature that showed that the use of vinegar reduced liver damage caused by paracetamol. The individuals studied had restored adequate levels of antioxidants in the liver, reduced pro-inflammatory factors and had a beneficial reduction in liver enzymes. In another study, researchers noted that apple cider vinegar prevented adverse changes in the liver due to a high-fat diet. All of this information is very promising and it is very safe to assume that vinegar has a beneficial effect on the liver. However, one must be aware that these data are from animal experiments and still need to be confirmed in human studies. I also found a scientific paper that showed that vinegar enhances calcium absorption in the intestines. This effect is due to the fact that vinegar increases the solubility of calcium compounds, making it more available to us. However, these reports also come from animal studies, so they should be approached with some distance. However, not to be so colorful, I will also say a few words about the possible side effects associated with the consumption of vinegar, as these may occur in some people. First of all, vinegar consumed in excess and, above all, undiluted, can damage tooth enamel as well as tissues lining the oral cavity and throat, leading to serious irritations. The conclusion is that if you want to consume apple cider vinegar, you should dissolve it in water beforehand or make salad dressings based on it and consume it that way. Secondly, a case of hypokalemia, reduced blood potassium levels due to drinking large amounts of apple cider vinegar, meaning about 250 milliliters, has been reported in the scientific literature. Of course, I give this information rather as a curiosity, since I personally do not know anyone who drinks that much apple cider vinegar, aside from the fact that it is not necessary at all to reap the benefits of this product. I will talk more about the method of consumption later in the video. It is thought that excess vinegar may disrupt the acid-base balance of the body and thus contribute not only to potassium loss, but also to bone disorders, resulting in an increased risk of osteoporosis. Due to this possible effect, special care should be taken by people taking diuretics, which can also cause potassium loss. While we are on the subject of medications, it should be also noted that, as I mentioned earlier, vinegar lowers blood sugar levels. And in theory, the use of diabetes medications in combination with the consumption of vinegar can lead to too much and dangerous reduction in blood glucose levels. Therefore, if you are taking diabetes medications and want to consume vinegar, I would recommend that you use caution and monitor your sugar levels. Apple cider vinegar can also slow down gastric emptying. Therefore, some people may experience gastrointestinal discomfort after consuming it. The most common symptoms are bloating, nausea and vomiting. To date, doubts about the effects of vinegar consumption on heartburn have not been resolved. According to some people, vinegar relieves gastroesophageal reflux, abbreviated as GERD. However, there is a lack of convincing evidence to conclusively support this effect. Instead, practice shows that diluted vinegar can help some people with mild reflux. But I certainly advised against its consumption by people struggling with moderate to severe reflux or heartburn. 
So, how do you use apple cider vinegar to provide the most health benefits while minimizing side effects? First of all, vinegar should be drunk diluted with water. Here I suggest 1 to 2 tablespoons of vinegar per 1 cup of water. The daily serving of vinegar should not exceed 2-3 tablespoons. If you want to lose weight, I suggest drinking vinegar before a meal, especially one that is high in carbohydrates. In other situations, vinegar is best drunk in the presence of a meal. Additionally, after drinking vinegar, it is good practice to rinse your mouth thoroughly with water to prevent tooth erosion and tooth decay. It is best to choose unfiltered, unpasteurized apple cider vinegar made from whole apples and sold in glass bottles. I hope that with this video I managed to dispel at least some of the doubts about the use of apple cider vinegar. That is all for today. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.